Dahil sa multi-million dollars na tagumpay sa Amerika, naging proud hanggang mawala ang lahat. Yumaman at nagtagumpay sa kabila ng kinalakihang hirap, subalit naging palalo sa buhay. Dahil sa tagumpay sa larangan ng basketball, naging mataas ang tingin sa sarili. Ano ang makababasag sa kanilang pagiging prideful? Alamin niyan sa ating episode Hashtag TSCA Pride dito sa The 700 Club Asia. Susunod na! Isang mapagpalang araw sa inyong lahat, lalo na sa ating mga kababayan abroad. Nawa ay nasa mabuti kayong kalagayan at nakakapag-adjust na sa new normal dyan sa inyong lugar. Lara, nung manalo ka ng Miss International noong 2005, na ginanap sa Tokyo, Japan. Anong naramdaman mo? Uh, Siyempre, very proud ako na nanalo ko and for the country as well, for the Philippines. Pero looking back, if we're talking about pride, akala ko, I was humble kasi in my speeches, I would say, glory to God, I give God all the glory, and yet my heart was very far from Him. And yun yung number one na symptom na akala mo, na, ng pride, is akala mo humble ka and that you're giving God gl- the glory when otherwise you're doing something else. Mm-hmm. Parabang, you're blindsided yes. na you really think humble na humble yes. ka, pero hindi pala. Yung pala hindi. <laughs> Dito sa ating unang kwento, bukod sa pride, dahil sa naging multimillionaire sa Amerika, hindi rin naging good steward si George sa natamasang tagumpay hanggang sa mawala ang lahat. Panoorin natin ang kwento. God was not in the picture at all. You know, I didn't think or I didn't believe that he had to be there for me to be successful. Sa gitna ng maginhawang buhay bilang isang milyonaryong Pinoy sa Amerika, tila ba wala nang hahanapin pa sa buhay si George. Mula sa pagiging simpleng empleyado hanggang sa makakuha ng sariling broker's license, nahanap ni George ang magandang kapalaran sa pagpasok niya sa mundo ng real estate sa USA. Magmula noon ay nakabili silang mag-asawa ng sariling preschool at nakagawa ng mga produktong earthquake kit para sa mga bata. It seems like going after good things is the right thing to do, just to make people happy around us. In other words, there was no wisdom. It was the worldly wisdom that we were exercising at that time. Like he said, it was all for our glory. So, I mean, we were spending money left and right, and, you know, all of our friends, you know, what we had. Sa akalang nakamtan ang lahat sa sariling lakas at galing, naghari ang yabang sa puso ni George, kaya't walang puwang para sa Diyos. Hanggang sa isang iglap, bumagsak ang kanilang negosyo. When we had a bad business deal, that's when we had to go bankrupt. And one morning we woke up, there were no more cars. And the kids were all the way to school. They go, Mom, where's my car? I go, I don't know. <laughs> and we found out they repossessed all the cars, and then we got notices on the house. So, We have to start all over again. Uh, ang natitira lang noon is plastic case na ganito na ang tawag namin edu case na didesign ng misis ko. That's all we had uh, to sell. Ang hirap magbenta kasi walang earthquake. Araw-araw wala na earthquake, hindi mo <laughs> earthquake palagi. Ang naranasang kawalan ang nagbigay ng puwang sa Diyos upang magsimulang makakilos sa puso ng kanyang asawa. For a long time, I was so miserable, but I decided one day to go to church. And then the pastor, it was Raul Reese from Calvary Chapel. As soon as he went to the podium and he opened the Bible and read, I knew right then and there that that was really what I was, what was lacking in my life was a relationship with Jesus. Inimbitahan ng kanyang asawa si George na magtungo rin sa simbahan. Sumama siya, ngunit bit-bit pa rin ang pagmamatigas sa puso hanggang sa isang mensahe ang bumasag dito. Doon ako tinamaan doon sa For God so loved the world and He gave. So siya nag-umpisa. Siya nag-initiate ng giving. It's not us that we have to go after Him. No, He's always coming after us. It's just a matter of us opening up our hearts to Him. Sa isang Christian crusade, tuluyang tinanggap ni George ang kanyang kahinaan at ang matinding pangangailangan sa Diyos. Naging inspirasyon ni George ang Panginoon sa negosyo. Sa tulong ng Diyos, 
nagkaroon silang mag-asawa ng karunungan na pagandahin pa ang kanilang produkto. Ang dating earthquake kit ay ginawa nilang mas kaakit-akit na first aid kit. Pumatok ang kanilang produkto. Nakabawi sila sa kita hanggang sa makabuo ng sariling first aid kit company. Nakapagbigay sila ng trabaho sa mga nangangailangan at dating may magugulong buhay. Marami rin silang naging manggagawang Pilipino kabilang ang kanilang mga anak na nagpapatakbo na rin sa negosyo ngayon. Sila na rin ang naging supplier ng mga first aid kit sa kilalang grocery at shopping stores sa Amerika. Sa lahat ng tinamasang biyaya, ginawang commitment ni na George at Merlin sa kumpanya ang paglalaan ng oras sa Diyos at pananalangin bago ang pagsisimula ng trabaho. Sa patuloy na pakikipag-usap sa Panginoon, nakalampag ang puso ni George na magsimula ng isang makabuluhang misyon, ang maipakalat ang pag-ibig ni Jesus at makatulong sa mahihirap. This is not about me anymore. This is my calling, this is our calling as a husband and wife and the family. Binuo nila ang isang ministry na tinawag nilang Vision Him Possible upang magdala ng suporta sa iba't ibang simbahan at misyonari sa Pilipinas, Mexico, South America, India at USA. God really settled me down to remind me that this is His work and this is His mission. If we continue to make ourselves available to Him, He will continue to grow and enlarge our territories for His sake, for His glory, not for us. Ang bahagi rin ng kinikita ni na George at Merlin sa negosyo ay napupunta sa mahihirap na Pilipinong tinutulungan ng Vision Him Possible. We're doing it to bring more people to the Kingdom of God. There's nothing better than seeing a smile on a little child seeing their club feet and all that be straightened and walk again. God blesses us so we can bless others. This is what we want to leave our kids. This is our legacy, serving the Lord, you know, loving the Lord, and not doing it for ourselves, but doing it for the Lord. Sa gitna ng maginhawang buhay bilang isang milyonaryong Pinoy sa Amerika, wala ngang ibang nais na ipagmalaki si George, kundi ang Panginoon na siyang may-ari ng kanyang buhay. When God said, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not on your own understanding, pinapakita niya sa amin palagi na He's the one that's in control. That's when we really learn to live. That's how we can experience the goodness and the faithfulness of God's Word. When you are prideful and you think that you have everything because of your own skills and dahil sa sarili mong kakayahan, akala mo din sa'yo yun eh. Katulad ng sinabi ni George and his family, they were spending money left and right kasi akala nila it was theirs. But the opposite of pride is humility. In Philippians 2.3, sabi doon, di ba, na um, do nothing out of selfish ambition, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. And that is what they did, na nakakatuwa and nakaka-inspire that after everything, when They, when they knew when when Jesus found them and Jesus saved them, that's what they were doing, de ba? They were helping a lot of people, not just in the Philippines but in other countries, pa. That's so true. The Lord loves them so much that now, with the right heart and the right spirit, He showed them. Now I'll show you what I can do when I'm in the equation of your life and in your business. Alam niyo po throughout the Scripture, we read a lot about the consequences of pride. In Proverbs 16:18, King Solomon wrote, "Pride goes before destruction, a haughty spirit before a fall." Ganito ang napagdaan ni George. He credited his success to his skills instead of giving glory to God, who gives us the knowledge and the power to produce wealth. Kaya mabuti na lamang at nakakilala sila sa Panginoon na pagtanto niya na hindi pwedeng maging security natin ang kayamanan. Tanging ang Panginoon lamang ang makapagbibigay ng security sa atin. Mayroong tagubilin si Apostle Paul tungkol dyan na applicable sa atin. Ang sabi niya, ituro mo sa mayayaman na huwag silang magmataas at huwag silang umasa sa kayamanang lumilipas, kundi sa Diyos na masaganang nagbibigay ng lahat ng atin ating pangangailangan upang tayo'y masiyahan. Pride keeps us away from God. It is not only boasting about ourselves for having done great things, but it is also about our unwillingness to ask forgiveness, 
for something we have done wrong or to release it to those who have wronged us. Alam mo kapatid, God opposes the proud, but He shows favor to the humble. Jesus says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. That's in Matthew 23, 12. If you're in a situation where you know you have hurt someone, though it was not intentional or even intentional, right now you can come to God in humility. Surrender your feelings, your hurts, and ask Him to give you wisdom on how to do it. And if that is your desire, let's come to God with a simple prayer to acknowledge Him as our Lord and as our Savior and watch Him do amazing things in your life. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you this very moment because Lord, your word says that you hate pride. And I realize, Lord, looking back at my life, I have been so proud about the many things I have done. I have been so proud not to even ask for forgiveness, not to even go to the persons I have hurt, even those that have hurt me. I said to myself, I can do this alone. But I realize I am nothing without you. So right this moment, I come to you and I humble myself. I ask for your forgiveness. Lord, it is your forgiveness that will set me free. Even so now, Lord, forgive me. I choose to turn my back on my sinful and ways, and Lord, and my prideful ways this very moment. And right now, Lord, I open my heart's door and I invite you, Jesus, to come into my life, to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be the God that will empower me, give me wisdom to live a life that is pleasing you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. I pray this prayer from my heart. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Kung sumabay kayo sa panalangin at isinuko ninyo ang inyong buhay kay Jesus, taglay nyo na ang pagpapakumbaba at kayo yung gagantimpalaan ng Diyos. Ang sabi nga ni Haring Solomon sa Proverbs 22 verse 4, ang paggalang at pagsunod kay Yahweh at ang kapakumbabaan ay nagbubunga ng yaman, buhay at karangalan. Share with us the important decision that you have just made and together we will praise and thank God. You can call CBN Asia Prayer Center. The hotline is 8737-0700. Our trained prayer counselors are on standby 24 hours a day, seven days a week to answer all your calls. They can pray for you and give you biblical advice for whatever you're going through. The information you share will be held in strict confidence. We also have our Viber number, 0943144. 4933. If you prefer to text us, the number is 0919-060-7567. And if you want to get connected to a Christian church near you, our prayer counselors can also help you get connected. Sa ating mga viewers via Pinoy TV abroad, pwede nyo kaming makontak sa pamamagitan ng Skype. I-type lang ang aming Skype ID, the 700 Love Asia. Maaari nyo ring i-post sa aming Facebook page ang inyong mga prayer requests. Pwede rin kayong makipag-chat sa amin. Ikwento nyo kung paano nyo na-overcome ang pride na matagal nang bumabalot sa inyong katauhan. Mag-log on sa aming website, cbnasia.org slash media center. Sa inyong social media account, Account, gamitin ang hashtag TSCA Pride. Naging laman ka makinala ng mga balita sa kabila ng lumalaking bilang ng mga napapatay. May mga away sa fraternity, nakikisali. Posible siguro mawala na ako ng trabaho. Nagdulot ito ng pangamba sa kanya. Nakikita ko po, nani at tatay ko, lagi po sila nag-aaway, wala po kapayapaan sa bahay. We must focus not on what divides us, but on what unites us. And that is the Prince of Peace. Get to know him in Better Together in Peace. been almost a year since I've played basketball competitively. 
injury has kept me from playing the sport I love. What am I even playing for at this point? Who am I even playing for at this point? I don't know. Basketball started at seven years old, and ever since then, I fell in love with the game. I always say basketball is a lifestyle. It's given me like energy, taught me life lessons. I've been playing it for almost my entire life. I really dedicated my schedule to really developing my game because I made it a goal in middle school and eighth grade that I wanted to play Division One basketball. Being a Filipina, it's very rare to see just Asians in general playing Division One sports. When I was at Dartmouth freshman year, basketball wasn't going as well as I expected to and thought I was going in thinking I was really good, but you're surrounded by other really good players too. It's so intimidating at first. I remember my teammate who has been very active and involved in the church, she approached me once and she was like, oh, why don't you just go with me to um, a club, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I did. I was able to not feel alone. That's where my relationship with God really started to grow again. Since then, I started to see my performance pick up. I was more confident. I just kept it all in perspective and God really helped me do that. Wow. I tried out for the Philippine national team. It was our summer break. I was informed I made the team. They said that the next tournament was 2015 SEA Games. I used it to play for the national team for two really big tournaments in 2015. And there's nothing really that compares to representing your country. And it kind of brings me a lot of pride to feel that I'm doing something really good, playing for your country is something that I will never regret and I'm really happy I was able to do that for the Philippines. Kind of pride kind of takes over, especially when things are going really well. Injury has kept me from playing the sport I love. I went to grad school and two weeks before the regular season, where our season started, I tear, I tear my ACL, my meniscus, and MCL all at once. It hurt so bad, and I was just so confused because it was so fast. It's like, did it really happen? Am I dreaming? No, I'm not. I can't move my knee, I have to use crutches. That was a really hard pill to swallow. Asking, questioning God, why, why, why now? Why are you doing this? And why would you put me through this? Why does it feel so bad? I was at a climax, I was at my peak, and then I was, came crashing down. I was upset. I definitely found outlets, and I forced myself to kind of vent out this negative energy that I had through talk, speaking with people, speaking to my teammates that have gone through ACLs. That was another trial, I think, that made me realize how much more I needed God and more, how much more I needed to work on my faith and God's allowed me to take a step back to make sure that you know pride doesn't fully take over. And Yeah, it was 10 months, 10 months of, uh, of recovery. You know? um, at the end of the day, I don't take that experience back. I grew a lot and I'm actually very thankful for it because it's opened my eyes to a lot of other new things. Just like old times. So I've just been focusing mostly on working for the league and covering social media for them, so it's been really fun. I didn't think I would also enjoy the game on the sideline. The fact that I can be courtside next to the player, and so I can't complain about that um, for WNBA too, so it's really fun. At the end of the day, when I reconnect the dots, it ended up being something more than I could have imagined for myself, and I'm really grateful for that. I've learned through God, through Jesus, and my faith that it's okay not to be in control of things because God's working to make sure that everything will be okay. <laughs> Alamo with her caliber, it's, if you're not walk careful, it's easy, it's so easy for pride to just slip in. Pero yung injury niya put a halt to the su success. Parang she, there was, she had to jam on the brakes and that made her ponder and think about what was going on in her heart. It was a blessing in disguise, sabi niya nga, di ba? She would never take that back. Tama. Alam niyo po, Sophia's pride about her success in basketball was literally broken when she tore her ligament in the knee. 
as King Solomon wrote in Proverbs 29, 23, one's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. Nung mamahinga siya sa paglalaro, ay napagtanto niya ang kanyang pagkakamali. Nagpakumbaba siya sa Panginoon at hinayaan niya ang Diyos na magkaroon ng kontrol sa kanyang buhay. Alam niyo po ang pagiging mayabang, mapagmataas at palalo ay hindi kaaya-aya sa Diyos. Kung ganito kayo ngayon, nangungusap sa inyo ang Panginoon na kayo'y magpakumbaba. Hayaan niyo hong ipanalangin ko kayo. Father God, we come to you humbly right now, O oh Lord God. We acknowledge, Lord, na we are nothing without you and that we cannot do anything without you, O oh Lord God. And right now, Father, I just pray for those who are watching, O oh Lord God. Father, they are seeking you right now, Father. They are crying to you, Lord God, asking for your help, Father God, in many aspects of their lives, O Lord God. I pray, Father, for those who are not well, O Lord God, that you will strengthen their bodies, O Lord. For those who have broken relationships, Father, that be in there, O Lord God. Heal their relationships, O Lord God. Give, Father God, Soften their hearts, O Lord God, and allow them to forgive, O Lord God. I just lift up to you all these people who are seeking you right now, who are humbly coming to you, Lord God. Please, Father God, hear their prayers for your glory and their benefit in Jesus' name. Amen. And there are several people watching right now with broken hearts, even broken spirits, because they have not attained their goals. The Lord is saying to you, now that you have decided to put yourself low and allow God to lift you up, I'm the God that will enable you. I'm the God that will empower you. So I give you the strength to try again and see if I will not lift you up, says the Lord. Receive that kapatid in faith in the name of Jesus. And there are several people watching right now na merong kayong mga karamdaman. The Lord is healing someone with upper respiratory tract infection. Receive your healing kapatid in Jesus' name. Someone who will undergo quadruple bypass. The Lord is right this very moment unclogging all your arteries. Receive that miracle for you kapatid in Jesus' name. There's also someone right now with severe allergies. The Lord is instantly healing you from allergy. Kapatid, para sa iyo yan, receive that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. To thrive means to grow, to flourish, to realize a goal despite the hardships. Unlock the keys to thriving with Bishop Manny Carlos in Citizen Shift. It's not your ability, it's God's ability that He gives you to produce wealth. Get online streaming access with your donation of 2,000 pesos to CBN Asia. Your support enables our countrymen to also thrive through the CBN Asia family of ministries. Become our partner today. Bilang panlima sa labing isang magkakapatid, mapalad na si Danilo kung makatanggap ng pinaglumaang uniforme mula sa kanyang kuya. Gayon pa man, naging tampulan siya ng mga panunukso dahil sa lumang-luma ang kanyang suot. May isang tinatakba nila yung ilong nila, yung parang pinakikita nila na hindi ka dapat tumap sa amin dahil tulong yung suot. <laughs> Pakiramdam ko talaga, naapi ako. Pero hindi ko malamas. Yan po yung sitasyon ko. Upang makaiwas sa mga pangungutya, naging kublihan niya ang library ng eskwelahan. Doon, ibinubuhos niya ang bakanting oras sa pagpapalawak ng kaalaman kung kaya naging mahusay siya sa math subject at memorization. So yun na lang ang naging reproach ko to avoid bullying. Which helped me a lot, ha? Kasi yung assignment ko, yung result ko, nagigat sa, sa lecture, lahat-lahat po. Ngunit dumating ang trahedya sa pamilya nang mamatay ang panganay niyang kapatid dahil sa hazing. Bunsod noon ay nanganib siyang matigil sa pag-aaral. Yung willingness ko makagrabe na apekto kasi mismo mother ko. Parang karo siyang kopya na mag-aaral pa kami ng college kasi baka mami ang mamatay din. Masali sa pra. Tinugunan ng pangalawa sa magkakapatid ang edukasyon ni Danilo kaya nakapagpatuloy siya sa kolehiyo. Kalaunan ay nakapagtapos siya ng kursong civil engineering sa Maynila. Nagtrabaho siya bilang teacher sa universidad 
Sa gitna ng malawak niyang pag-aaral, isang kasagutan naman ang kanyang sinaliksik. Ang naging stage ko ngayon, sino ba talaga ako? Sino ba talaga ang Diyos? Sino ba talaga ang totoo sa religion when it comes to faith? Naging challenge sa akin yun. Upang patunayan ang kanyang galing, nahilig siya sa pakikipagdiskusyon tungkol sa pananampalataya kung saan nabuo ang yabang sa kanyang puso. Ngunit nagbago ang lahat ng iyon nang minsang makausap niya ang isang co-teacher. Ito, sabi ko, pagka medyo nagtatalo kami, parang relax na relax lang siya kahit ang nasabihin ko. Naging interested siya yan ako, parang nasasagot niya, tapos relax lang siya, parang lagi akong talo eh. Magmula noon, nauhaw siya sa salita ng Diyos. Sa pag-aaral ng Biblia, nabago ang kanyang pananaw at natutong magpakababa sa harap ng Panginoon. Masyadong dedicated ako. Pagka masyado kang dedicated, nabilis pumasok na spirit. Tapos sa buhas yung spirit, nawala lahat yung, yung uh, pride of life. Nabago ako okay. eh. Lumago ang kanyang pananampalataya na naipasa niya rin sa kanyang naging pamilya. Bunga ng mga pangangailangang pinansyal, pansamantala niyang nilisan ang bansa upang magtrabaho sa Kuwait. Sa kabila ng pagiging malayo sa pamilya, ang Diyos ang kanyang naging pag-asa. Naging bahagi siya doon ng isang Bible study group kasama ang iba pang OFWs. Naitaguyod nga niya ang pamilya nang siya ay maging surveyor sa Kuwait. Panibagong pagpapala pa ang dumating nang ma-promote siya bilang field engineer. Dahil sa ipinakitang husay, unti-unti siyang umangat sa trabaho bilang structural designer. Kabilang sa kanyang mga naidisenyo ang malalaking gusali at malls sa United Arab Emirates, pati na ang tulay sa Hong Kong. Tumanggap siya ng mga pagkilala tulad ng Most Commended Structural Engineer noong 2015 at OFW Takilang Bayani sa Civil Engineering Category noong 2016. Patuloy na namayagbag ang karera ni Danilo na naging tampok pa sa ilang international magazine. Sa laki ng natamasang mga pagpapala sa Panginoon, naiangat niya ang pamilya mula sa hirap at naging daluyan din ang biyaya sa iba. Jesus is everything in my life. Yan, lahat. Wala ka nang hanapin pa. Ngayon ay tumulak naman siya sa Dubai upang patuloy na linangin ang kakayahang ng galing lamang sa Panginoon. See what humility can do to a man. The Lord lifted up Danilo and dami niyang awards. But arrogance, pride, and haughtiness are behaviors that are detestable to God. The Bible in the book of Proverbs 16.5 tells us, Everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured, he will not go unpunished. Sa halip na maging mapagmataas, sinabi ni Jesus, ang sino man sa inyo na nais maging dakila ay dapat maging lingkod ninyo. At ang sino mang nais maging pinuno ay dapat maging alipin ng lahat. Sapagkat ang anak ng tao ay naparito, hindi upang paglingkuran, kundi upang maglingkod at upang mag-alay ng kanyang buhay para sa ikatutubos ng marami. Pride is self-worship. It is taking for ourselves the glory that belongs to God. He alone deserves the glory, for He is the one who enables and sustains us to accomplish everything in this world. Thank you all for watching. We hope that you have been inspired and given renewed hope by all the stories we featured on the show. God bless you more and more. Please stay safe always. The threat of coronavirus is still in our midst, kaya let's not be complacent. God bless you. Ngayong Martes, alamin ng something special kay Casey at bakit siya hinahangaan. Lahat tayo ay ginawa ng Panginoon ng pantay-pantay. Lalaking nalulong sa bisyo at nalubog sa utang. Paano nakabangon? Ano ang tindahan para sa bayan? At ano-ano? ang kanilang special projects. Alamin ang mga kasagutan sa Something, Something special. special. Tampok sa The 700 Club Asia. Martes, alas 12 ng gabi sa GMA.